what is up everyone? Brian with you from the Game Covenant. Today we are starting a brand new series. We are playing a game called Terra Invicta. So if you've not heard of Terra Invicta, essentially it answers the question, what would happen if you mix XCOM with Crusader Kings 2? Essentially, it's a grand strategy game where you take control of a faction on Earth that appears after aliens have arrived for the first time. So the game was developed by the same people who made the Long War mod, for XCOM, which I enjoyed, and I mean, I love XCOM, so it definitely has that whole XCOM flavor, what is going on, uh, what are the aliens doing, it just has so much of that flavor and feel to it that I absolutely adore it, but in addition to that, it also has a whole lot of grand strategy elements, and honestly, that's why we are making this episode here, so if you're looking for actual gameplay, that's probably going to come in the next episode, we're going to entitle this one Episode Zero, and essentially, I want to kind of give a broad overview overview of everything about the game and kind of just really give a beginner's guide to how it gets how to get started because this is a bit of a complicated game that even with a guide you're still going to be struggling for a little bit i think i restarted the game like four or five times before i actually kind of got it and kind of started understanding what i was supposed to do in the beginning of the game so uh, i will say i did receive a key from hooded horse the publisher for this the game will be coming uh to steam early access on september 26 where you can pick it up your Self. I personally been having a lot of fun with the game, um, but once again, just keep in mind, I did get the key free, so kind of keep that in mind. So, like I said, essentially the game is you're taking control of a faction of Earth after aliens arrive. The game is basically broken down into three different phases. Phase one, you're essentially trying to get as much support from Earth as possible. Not so much in the XCOM way. Uh, it's a little bit more backdoor shadowy stuff. You're trying to take over legislators and executive branch and you're fighting against the different factions for kind of approval and control and it's pretty awesome and you're basically sending consoles around doing missions phase two then is you kind of start going into the stars and this is only as far as I've gotten in my own game so the game itself is, is pretty beefy in length but essentially you're trying to start getting space stations up you're trying to get uh, different habitats and different uh, planets and you're really trying to put yourself out there into the stars and then phase three which once again I hadn't got there but I'm pretty sure essentially you could just call it expanse it's basically just like the expanse and no spoilers but essentially the solar system is at war and there is a strange threat that is also out there as well so essentially uh phase three you're building uh you can build your own uh warships uh in space and then you're doing space battles and stuff like that so we're going to be going ahead and starting a new game. Like I said, there won't be any uh, gameplay, but we're just going to go through all this stuff pretty quickly. I talk fast, so hopefully it's not going to be super, super long. There are a couple scenarios. We're going to be going over the modern scenario. I've actually not even played that one, so no idea. I assume this one just kind of like is a start for a little later on, which I don't know if that will even be in the full game. Maybe that's just for the release for the uh, press build. I don't know. But then we're going to be playing with the full solar system. I will say the game is pretty heavy on processor. Uh, uh, computing power so if you for example are playing on a laptop you know that your computer will run hot I have a laptop a gaming laptop um, which is pretty good gaming laptop it may even be better than my PC but I have a uh, little fan that sits on my lap that you know you plug in the computer and it basically blows air into the computer and normally when I'm doing that most games like when I have that, most games will never trigger the fans in the laptop itself. Like, they'll just be running on low. This game, man, my laptop was running full speed the whole time. So, just keep in mind, if you have a laptop, it's going to run hot. It's not super heavy on graphics, but, you know, it's there's a lot going on in the background with the processor. So, I suppose if, you know, you want it to run a little lighter, you can probably go with a smaller solar system. But we'll be doing full solar system. Then, there are factions. I mentioned how... Essentially, you're taking control of one of the factions of Earth after aliens land. Each faction is different, and there are a total of eight factions. And so, essentially, you can choose if you want a slightly easier game, you can reduce the amount of factions. But, you know, why would we do that? Um, and so then, the other option here is you actually can pick your different faction. Each faction has different goals, has different objectives, has different ideals. So, for example, Humanity First wants to wipe out all aliens and wants humanity to be the number one uh, faction 
mission going forward in the solar system. Then you have these servants who are all about just basically uh, giving the aliens whatever they want. And so they're more like backstabbing Earth and really just trying to like appease the aliens. And then you have like Project Exodus whose whole goal here is to essentially load everyone up on colony ships and go to different distant stars because you just got to get the heck out of here. We'll be starting as the resistance. It's essentially your normal uh, faction of, oh my gosh, uh, the aliens are arrived. Well, we need to resist the aliens. Essentially, the resistance is essentially XCOM, would be the best way to describe it. So, uh, we're protecting humanity by resisting the alien invasion. We can customize it, but, you know, all you're doing is changing your name and stuff there, so nothing there. Um, we're not going to enable tutorial because I know what I'm doing, and we're going to go with uh, game difficult of just normal, which will be fine for now. So, I'm going to go ahead and hit start game. It's going to take us a minute to load in because, like I said, there's a lot with the processor nice thing is once you're actually loaded into the game it runs pretty smoothly after that so uh, I'll be back in one second then once we're loaded in. All right, so we are now in the game and I skipped the opening cutscene as well as the flavored dialogue and some of the text and all that stuff. I'll show it off in the next episode when we actually start the game, but I really just kind of want to get in here and kind of show off everything that's happening. So first thing that happens when you join a new game is the aliens crash land somewhere in the world. I think in the Steam Next Fest demo, uh, originally they always crash landed in Russia, but now they can crash land anywhere in the world, which is is pretty cool i've seen it in brazil i've seen it in europe i've not seen it in like uh down here in like asia or australia yet but i imagine it probably can crash land over there so then the next thing you'll notice is that we have a really detailed map here of earth we have a bunch of different countries that are broken down into regions so the larger countries are going to have a bunch of little regions that help make it up uh well our, uh some of these smaller countries then might actually be merged into larger states which you know just makes it a lot more simple uh uh, dealing with a bunch of, you know, the one big country as opposed to a bunch of smaller countries. But when I say that the map's pretty detailed, you'll see that, like, even down to the fact that we have Russia invading Ukraine. Um, I mean, the game starts on September 30th. That's, like, the first uh, uh, first day of the game. And so, you know, the map should be pretty familiar unless something catastrophic happens between now and then. But when I talk about the map being really detailed, I'm not talking about just that. I'm also talking about the fact that every country has, you know, what kind of government it has, has what kind of unrest level it is at, as well as what its GDP is at, which essentially then kind of determines how many control points it has, which we'll get to. And then it has like the military settings, how many nukes it has, how big is its navy, uh, its people, how illiterate they are, how um, unified they are. And like, there's just a lot of details going into every one of these countries which is really 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 cool i have to say i'm pretty impressed by the level of detail in fact to the point that and i don't know if this is intentional or not but they actually have an armored division here in texas essentially right where there is a giant military base uh in a, a city called colleen texas it's fort hood so i don't know if that's intentional or not but like if that is dang good job good job good job um but then not only is earth pretty detailed you can actually scroll out and you can actually see here uh yeah the entire solar system is pretty freaking detailed and so when I say that this game is going to be pretty processor heavy, yeah, I'm pretty sure we're going to get some lag here as we start getting later in the game and all of a sudden we're uh, colonizing all these different worlds and putting bases and habitats and all that fun stuff. So yeah, there is a lot going on here, which is pretty freaking awesome. All right, so let's talk really quickly about the UI and everything that's going on there. First up, over here on the left, we'll talk up there. You know, we got our settings menu. We got our objective panel here, which, you know, for the most part, all the early missions are going to be things that you'll probably do to begin with anyways. But, you know, it's always good to kind of keep an eye on. Our initial objectives are always going to be things like investigate the crash, you know, uh, research this text, see what the aliens are doing. You know, it's always going to be that kind of normal stuff that you'll probably be doing anyways. But if you ever need to see where you're at it's kind of a good thing just to come and check then after that we have the different resources so the first group of resources we have listed here are resources that are important while we are on earth well they're probably going to be important even as we start expanding to the stars but they're uh, resources that are imperative for having here on earth where the next group of resources are resources that we don't really have to worry about until we get to space like we're not even going to really go over these like we got water we got volatiles all that stuff is just stuff that we're going to start mining 
hanging when we get to uh, space, but we really don't have to worry about any of that while we're here on Earth because essentially all of that stuff is essentially considered infinite for everyone on Earth. So we don't really have to worry about that until we start getting to stars because, you know, it kind of gets kind of expensive to like ship water to the moon. So we might want to set up our own water mining on a distant star. So the resources that we actually care about right now, first up, we got our cash reserves, our money. One thing to keep in mind here with the money is you'll see it says 0.41. Now, the only reason I bring that up is that's our daily income. Our monthly income is actually 12.7. I bring that up because there's a lot of times when you're like wanting to buy something or you're looking into something and it's like, hey, it's going to cost you 12 money per month. And you're like, oh, OK, that's way more money than I have. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, we're actually making 12.7. So you just got to kind of keep in mind that the number represented up there isn't actually your monthly income. Uh, then after that we have influence influence is essentially how much influence you have um, I'd say probably 60% of the missions and the things that you're gonna be doing early game um, are gonna be influence related are gonna be things where you can definitely start pumping some influence into and so getting your influence uh, income up as high as possible early on is pretty dang important couple ways to do that number one global public opinion so the more popular you are the more influence you're gonna be making but then also also, too, uh, your monthly income is going to be based on counselors as well as like there's other various things that we'll talk about here in a little bit to help supplement it. After that, then we have covert ops. Covert ops are essentially going to be points that you can put towards uh, different missions like investigating an alien crash site will take five covert ops. You'll notice that we're actually not making, we have no income on it uh, as the resistance to begin with. So that's something that we're going to have to look into, especially if we're going to want to be doing some espionage, which of course, why wouldn't you want to be able to do some stuff? But there's other missions where you can like kidnap uh, chancellors or counselors, or you can go like assassinate them or steal things or, you know, increase the unrest and stuff like that. And all that's going to be based on covert ops, which we don't have an income of yet. So then the next resource up here we have is boost. Boost, once again, is how we get stuff from Earth into space, whether uh, you know it's the resources to build space stations or whether it's actually a space station or a habitat on Mars and whatnot. Everything we shoot off into space from Earth is gonna require a certain amount of boost. Boost is essentially generated by countries that have a space flight program. So for example, we have France over here, which has a mission control center. And so uh, as we start getting control of the uh, control points here, we'll start getting more and more boost income per month uh, now keep in mind countries like America are gonna give you more boost income per month than something like France but one of the cool things that exists in the game is a country like for example Canada they don't have a space flight program but they uh, once you get control of the control points you can start adjusting some of the resources and actually start building the space flight program there and so then once they actually finish building a space flight program at that point then they'll get a mission control center and they'll start generating you boost every month so so the more control points, the more countries you control that have space flight program, the more boost available. Now, along the same lines, we have the mission controls, which we already kind of pointed out. So the mission controls, they exist on the map. And for everything we shoot into space, whether it's a habitat, whether it's a space station. So let's say we have two space stations and a habitat on the moon. At that point, we're going to need three mission control centers. The one thing to keep in mind, though, is all of these exist on the map. So number one, there is a limited number of them. But once again, uh, space flight programs you can slowly start pumping more resources into their mission control so they can build more so you can get more that way um, but the more important thing is since they exist on the map you can actually sabotage them so if for example your opponent has three things in space and has three mission controls you can go sabotage one of his mission control centers blow it up so then all of a sudden guess what he can't actually uh, get the benefits from one of his uh, items in space which is pretty freaking cool Next up, then we have science. Science comes from your mission control. Uh, most of it, honestly, I think comes from your uh, advisors from your uh, council. Uh, and essentially that kind of goes into not just your research for tech, which will show the tech tree, which is freaking gigantic, but then also into uh, how quickly you can kind of research projects. Uh, and certain projects are like, hey, build a habitat or build a space station or stuff like that, you know? And you'll need science to go ahead and start popping that out. Once again this is our daily income we're getting 1.2 and then last but not least we have our control point 
cap. So essentially every country to get resources from it, you end up taking over these control points, which we will kind of go into a little more detail here in the future. Uh, a country that has a higher GDP is going to have more control points. So for example, you see the Western Europe countries all have four, where then we pop down to like uh, Sudan down here and only has the two. I don't think, oh yeah, okay, so a couple of them only have one, uh, three over there, but then you get to like China and the US and you have six. So once again, the more control points you have, the more control you have over the country, the more benefits you get from the country. But the thing is, depending on the control point you take over, the more it counts against the cap. So you can see this one right here, the red, costs against the cap 28.8. Four. So all of a sudden we would have 28.84 against 125. Whereas, for example, we went and took over Yemen's only control point here. That one's only cost 3.81. So controlling some of the bigger nations gives you more resources. Yes, but counts against your cap. That cap, cap you're going to want to raise in the future. Uh, as you start merging countries together, you can actually uh, reduce some of the control point costs. But you're really going to start running against that cap here before too long in the game. And as you start running against the cap and go over the cap, it starts reducing your influence, uh, your influence income. So at a certain point, you might actually start going negative. So you kind of have to like balance it where, you know, you want to control as much as you can make as much resources as you can without actually getting you into the negative uh, income when it comes to uh, influence. And then last but not least over here, we have the different uh, map modes we can look at as well as then the, uh, the time and then the pause and the speed and all that fun stuff. And then this is just our different uh, counselors, which we'll get to here in one second. All right, so now let's get to the buttons here that are on the main screen. The first two are just kind of like your go to earth button and go to your space button. Like those you'll use every once in a while, but they're not really that big. I will say hitting the go to earth button when you're in space is really cool. I just love how it flies in. It's it's awesome. But then starting on the third one is where you start getting to the really, really important buttons. So the third one is your console. Your console members are your agents that you basically employ that you send all over the world to do a variety of missions. And essentially that's going to be what the whole first part of the game is going to be. You're going to basically send all your different agents on different missions around the world and uh, they're going to accomplish different things for you. Now every agent, every council member has a different class. You got diplomats, you have activists, you have journalists, you have hackers, you have officers, you have politicians, there's spies, there's tycoons. All of them are going to come with a different, uh, not only different stats, but also a different set of missions. Keep in mind, just because a, uh, well, two diplomats might actually have a different set of mission. Uh, one diplomat might not have a couple missions that another diplomat has and vice versa. So not only are you looking at missions when you recruit people, but you're looking at their stats. You got persuasion, you got influence, you got espionage, you got command, you got administration, you got science and you got security and you got loyalty. All of those come into play. And we're going to go over agents here or the council here pretty quickly because this is kind of like the first thing you're going to do when you actually get into the game is basically recruit a member for your council and start deciding what kind of missions you want to send them on and where you want to send them. Next up then, we have the nation tab, which is going to lag my game. Yep, there you go. Because there's a lot of nations. There are a lot of nations on the map. One thing that is not noticeable at first, um, but is really kind of cool. So if you want to sort anything by specific column, like let's say I want to figure out the nation that would give me the most science if I controlled it. You can actually click the science and it'll show me, hey, the US, hey, China. And you can actually see how many control points they have. And so you can kind of scroll down here and be like, oh, hey, Canada is giving me 70 and only has three. That might actually be worth trying to go uh, two. And then you have like the different uh, um, um, different uh, uh, zones that they might be a part of or the different factions they might be a part of, which we hadn't talked about, but we'll get to in the future. But it kind of gives you a good idea of where everything stands. It kind of shows you how popular you are in a country as well as how popular someone else is in the country, which is actually kind of cool. I didn't actually know it did that, or at least I never paid attention to that before. That's kind of crazy that some of these are already like full up, man, like 88% already for the servants. That's, that's insane. All right. So then after that, we get the habitat, which we're not going to end up worrying about that. 
here in the beginning of the game, not that big of a deal. The only two habitats to start with is the International Space Station and then what Tigong, Tigong Station, um, which are both controlled by two different factions. We have no control, so we can't actually do anything with them. Um, but as we start getting our own habitats, as we start sending things uh, like on the moon or space station and stuff like that, we can start building and adjusting our habitats there. Uh, then the next tab is how we end up building spaceships and we can start doing ship construction. All of that is gonna be much, much later in the game because there's a bunch of tech we got to research first speaking of tech then we also have our tech tree so there are two different um things to pay attention here on the tech tree you have the top three techs and then you have the bottom three which are kind of engineering slash tech projects so the top three projects are projects that the entire world is sharing so essentially even if you don't research even if you don't put a single point into uh any uh bit of one of these researches once it finishes you're still going to get the benefits from it but the thing is whoever ends up completing the most then gets to actually pick the next tech so you know there are some benefits to actually contributing some tech uh towards a specific one in addition to that different um different factions different uh, council members might give you different bonuses into different tech research and so um really you, you know we can take a look here at the tech tree and this thing is just freaking gigantic like i mean this is the un uh expanded tree and like oh my gosh this thing is freaking gigantic we can hit view view full tree and it literally takes like a minute to actually load in because this thing is so freaking gigantic um keep in mind most of this is not going to come into play early game uh it can be a little confusing but i have to say they do a pretty good job where if you click science lab you can actually see where it leads to by like it shows the yellow but oh my gosh oh <laughs> It actually crashed because it was so big. It actually closed itself. So you can see there's a pretty big tech tree there. Um, initially, when you're picking the next tech, though, usually there's only going to be like seven or eight. There's not going to be that many. Like, there's not going to be like 50 for you to choose from. So, you know, at least initially, you're not going to be super, super overwhelmed. And then at any point, you can actually like look at the tech details and see what they do. Then down here, we have our individual projects. Whatever we do here, we get the benefit of no one else gets. So to begin with, we are doing an audience research. At the end of the audience research, let's go ahead and look at it. So at the end of the audience research, which is 100 science, it'll give us basically 25 influence. So essentially, it's a repeatable project for us just to get a little bit of influence. Um, eventually, we're going to start seeing different um, projects. Some are going to be like, for example, hey, this is how you build a space station and so you're gonna have to like actually do the research yourself to figure out how to actually build the uh, space station so the quicker you do that, you might be able to get a heads up uh, against some of your opponents. Um, the other thing is sometimes you're going to get uh, benefits from completing a research. Like one of the research I remember I was doing yesterday was like, hey, when you complete this, your boost income goes up by 10%. So it's going to be stuff like that. In addition, there's going to get some mission uh, resistance objectives that are going to be stuff that you're going to have to research. Now, we only have one of these. Um, eventually, we can get more as we uh, unlock different organizations for our counselors, which we didn't talk about but we'll we'll talk about here in a little bit and then at another point you can build a module at one of your habitats to actually get you the third one now keep in mind just because you have more doesn't speed up what you're doing that's still based on your science here so i can go like and put a hundred percent into all of these and guess what i'm not really putting much into anything now i'm putting two points set or 0.275 into each one of these where if i'm putting 100 points percent into one i'm getting all 1.1 so you kind of got to balance it there's certain times where you're like hey i actually would like to speed that up um or there's actually times where you're like hey i want to actually be able to choose the next tech but you can actually look and see how much someone's already contributed and be like, yeah, there's no way I can actually pass them. So I'm just not going to worry about it or bother about it. So really, it's kind of a interesting game of trying to figure out, do you want to help everyone or do you want to help yourself? Keep in mind, helping everyone's kind of important because ultimately there are aliens out there and however you feel about aliens you're going to need tech to interact with them um, at least on a successful manner and then last but not least we kind of have the overall intel uh, uh 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 tab here so we got the intel tab here for all the different uh factions as you start learning more about these different factions you're just going to start like learning their resources their objectives uh the relations what techs they currently have where their counselors are and stuff like that right 
right now we know nothing about uh, anyone but as the game starts progressing you're going to start getting that you can start capturing other people's counselors and so then at that point you're going to start learning more about it and then in addition to that you can even maybe do a sneaky employ of them where you can actually uh, uh make them a double agent and then at that point everything becomes available to you which is really cool other thing is everyone's gonna have a different victory condition and i think the victory condition changes uh every game like it I, I'm not entirely sure how the victory condition works. Same thing with the goals. So because of that, that stuff is going to be one of those things which might change every single time. So you got to keep an eye on it. And so knowing what the servants are doing is probably going to be pretty important for us. Then we have the aliens over here. We can see this is the only we have not tracked any aliens yet. And the only event we have is the current crash down. We then have the global opinion here. We can see the wars. We can see the commodities, world data, environment, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. We can totally mess up the environment. Uh, then we also have the solar system here. So this is basically kind of like the nation tab, but just with the solar system. And then the transfer planner. If we wanted to move something from one planet to another, this is how we do it. But once again, this is going to be much more late in the game. All right, so before we get to your first couple turns in the game and kind of how those work, there's one more thing I want to talk about, and that's the information panel anytime you click on any one of these countries. So what pops up here, we already kind of talked about some of this stuff, but you can kind of hover over it and kind of get a good idea of what it does. Uh, up top, we have the different control points. Remember, those are based on the GDP, and we can hover over and see what they actually give us access to. So this one gives us access to a specific mission as well as investment points, science, and you can see how much it cost where now you'll notice that the last point on every single one is considered the executive branch normally you can't just take control of the executive branch like i can't just say hey i want control of the executive you first have to have control of another one of the points before you can get to the objective so how that works in practice where is if i take control of this first point here in venezuela no one else is ever going to be able to come in and take this executive point why because they're not able to get another point in until they kick me out so what that does is that kind of allows you to kind of ninja a couple areas um, same thing's kind of true here when you get to like uh, the three is if you control the first two then no one can grab the third one that being said I could grab the first one the servants could grab the second one and then either one of us could grab the third one so you know there's gonna be a bit of a balance in the act when it comes to uh, uh, the, 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 the countries that have more points and once again yeah you just hover over and you can see what they do but that last one is where you control the executive branch controlling the executive branch then allows you to uh, do missions uh, basically you can kind of determine what the country does uh, you can do the set policy mission set policy mission are going to normally be things like declare war on a country or have peace with a country at any point you can kind of hover over here and you can actually see what policies are available you'll notice that there's really not any policies available over there but if we went over here to like France for example we could declare war on Russia we could cede territory uh, to um, the Red Kotkin states whatever we can disband an army or we can disarm warheads if we go here and this is where things get really really cool we can go down to spain or yeah to spain and one of the options here is we can actually then break out and we can grant independence to the catalonian region here with barcelona and stuff which is really interesting so what you can do with the uh set uh what is it called again the set policy mission is you can either merge countries together like initially until we start getting some more text we really can't merge too many countries together but eventually we can make the eu its own country and so then everyone who's a member of the EU, if we have control of them, we can actually make it into a super country. Or if you're trying to work against the interests of a country, you can actually start breaking apart a country, aka, hey, uh, cede territory to other uh, organizations or maybe to different countries. And all that comes down to basically whether or not uh, they have a claim. So you can kind of go through and you can see who has claims on different territories. So you'll notice that, for example, in Spain, uh, the EU has claims on all of them because they're a part of the EU. But in addition to that, in Barcelona, the Catalonia has a claim on that as well. So you kind of need to have claims i think before you can start uh, uh actually just generating it southern balkan states uh oh okay so those are the northern oh interesting so both of these then have uh these guys can actually merge together is what it looks like and i think i saw the czech republic yeah can actually merge with slovakia and become czechoslovakia which is you know interesting so they have all those little things as you start controlling them now keep in mind you're probably like a once you get access to that you're going to need to be able to control um 
basically all the control points in uh, one or both of the countries to actually make that work. It kind of depends on the claims and how things work out there. The other thing that's kind of freaky, and I discovered this in my game last night, is so France is technically the leader of the European Union. They're the lead nation of the European Union, so they're the only one that can actually make the European Union a actual country. Uh, I didn't have access to France yesterday, and so even though I had access to like Spain and Portugal and a bunch of other EU members, I couldn't actually make the EU a country until all of a sudden I took France, which at that point had been like super fortified by a couple of the other factions. So so if you're wanting to make the EU, just know that you're going to need France. Hopefully they kind of change that in the future because, you know, I don't know. And the funny thing about that is France actually had declared war on Ukraine and was like doing a bunch of really weird things. And it was like, wait, what? So I don't know if France leaves the EU. I imagine then probably Spain or someone like that would become leader of the EU. And then at that point you could. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So then the other stuff that's down here is we can look at the different armies that the country owns. Keep in mind how they design the armies in the game is essentially they only put armies on the board for countries that could project an army and go invade someone like today. So, for example, Egypt has a large enough army that they could go and invade their neighbors. You know, Turkey has a large enough army right now they could go invade their neighbors. So, Ukraine, you'll notice, doesn't have an army. Now, they technically kind of do, and you'll see they're actually fighting. It's like this resistance that's actually fighting back against Russia. So, every country kind of has that resistance kind of has that default military but a country doesn't have an army unless they have enough force to put out an army pretty quickly now germany you'll notice doesn't have an army but if i bump their uh their priorities down here and i started saying build an army they're going to be able to build an army really really quickly and once they get to 60 here they'll have an army pop out on the map so if i want to build a bunch of armies you know i might then all of a sudden put a bunch of build army orders to the countries i control and all of a sudden we'll start seeing a bunch of armies pop out that way and you'll probably want to focus on um on on, on nations that actually are already ticked up here because that's going to take a little bit of time it won't take as long as going from zero but you know so on and so forth same thing with the nuclear weapons you can start putting points towards it i would imagine that's going to have some negative impact though if all of a sudden for example you're um controlling um you know let's say colombia and all of a sudden you want to start going for nukes i imagine some of the other countries are going to probably get i don't know maybe a claim on you or something i, I don't know how that would work we might have to try that out um so then what else did we need to talk about oh yeah that was the army tab um, let's pop back here to America because it had all the different tabs. We have the priority tab. This is once you start controlling the nation, as you start controlling these different control points, that's where you can start putting these dots on. So you can either go from one to three dots and everything. And as you put more dots, it'll start changing the percentage to basically prioritize it. Also, when you control all of the control points, you can kind of use one of these. There's like 40 uh, kind of uh, prereq things that you can basically pick and they have a pretty good default one for your faction to begin with but you can really kind of tweak this however you want um and each one of these has a different uh a, a, a different factor so economy and you can kind of hover over them it affects the gdp welfare is going to affect more the environment uh and equality in the country which is going to help with the polarization knowledge is going to help with the education unity is going to help with the polarization military is going to basically uh, internal security and military technology. Ah, so I think it helps you with military technology. Research it a little bit quicker. Spoils is essentially how much money you're taking from the country. So you could basically turn off everything but spoils and you'll essentially be uh, taking all of the money from the country. This would be like doing black market deals, you know, kind of stuff behind the scenes. You basically bought off all the politicians and all the money to the country is actually going to you which is going to help you, but it's really going to screw over the country. Funding is kind of the exact same thing, but it doesn't hurt the country. Funding essentially improves how much money you make from the country without actually harming the actual GDP and everything else with the country. Then we have boost, which we already talked about, mission control, which we talked about, build army and nuclear weapons. Um, uh, was there one other thing I wanted to talk about? Oh, yeah. So really, you can kind of decide how you want to do with countries like, hey, maybe I want the economy so that they make a whole bunch of money, but then that might actually hinder the environment. Maybe you want equality, which is really great for the environment, but then the money might struggle. Um, knowledge, so you can get a bunch of science, but you know, then all of a sudden uh, it hurts the economy. So there's all these different ways that you can really tweak the system and tweak every different country, which is really cool. And keep in mind for however many control points they have that's how many different things you can adjust and you can only adjust the tabs that you actually currently control 
So the next we have the regions, just shows you the regions, and then you have the different relations. And as you actually control a, a country uh, with the relations, you can actually sit there and adjust it and you can declare war on someone, you can declare allies. Uh, if you control two countries, you can automatically make them an ally. If for example, I control, let's just pick random countries here. If I controlled Brazil and um, the servants controlled Mexico, uh, I could try submitting a alliance with Mexico, but then they would have to accept. So you just gotta kind of keep that in mind. So that's basically all that. So then let's go ahead and hop in here to the first couple turns and what they'll look like. All right, so now that you know how everything works, how are your first couple turns gonna work? So personally, I think there are two things you need to do when you first get into a game. This is after my numerous restarts. I really kind of, I really broke it down to two things that I think are super, super important at the beginning of the game. There's lots of ways to play this game, so your mileage may vary, but this is what I do. I usually go into the research and right away, I feel like you wanna uh, adjust this to your liking before you ever unpause the game. I generally like to put two points, two ticks here into one of the texts. Honestly, it doesn't really matter which one. I like Global Research Skywatch, but it doesn't really matter. But at least on normal difficulty, having two ticks here is usually enough for me to have enough research to be able to choose the next tech. I like to be able to choose the next tech just because personally, I kind of like to go down the route where I can start merging countries together so I can get as many control points as possible. And so because of that, I like to contribute a little bit into one of these techs so I can actually make sure that tech comes up pretty early on. Uh, once that tech is picked, I don't even really need to put the research to it. Um, at that point, I can just let everyone else do it. But at least initially, I kind of find putting a little bit so I can choose is, is pretty worth it. Then the other thing that I need uh, want to change here is the management research. So these are all these different research. By default, it starts with audience research. But with the audience research, it basically just grants you 25 influence, which is OK. But it's not really that hard to get influence, I feel, early in the game. I feel like the management is far more important. All four of these are essentially uh, repeatable uh, missions. This one gives you 25 influence or 25, yeah, influence. This one gives you 100 money. This one increases your management capacity by just a couple points. It's not that big of a deal, but honestly, a couple points allows you to essentially control another control point. So I usually like to go for that one right away. And then operation research get, uh, basically gives you some more ops um, available. I, like I said, enjoy the management research. It's more expensive than the other one, so it's going to take a long time to finish because we have basically no science right now which is kind of horrible but I usually like to just get that going we're gonna have a new uh, we're gonna have a few other missions pop up that we're gonna replace this before it finishes but I like to just get as many points towards that as possible early game. Uh, so then after that, the only other thing you need to do is go ahead and go into your resistant console. So the console uh, tab is probably the most important tab in the game because essentially it determines everything you can do in the game, at least early game. Uh, it's going to determine how much income you're making on some of the resources. It's gonna determine how successful you are in uh, getting support from nations. It's also going to adjust your science income as well as different organizations how many you can control so initially you start with two uh, you can buy up to four uh, without any sort of tech you can actually research then two different techs to get a total of six and then the last two slots are for enemy counselors that you can actually turn to your side one thing to keep in mind when you turn an enemy counselor to your side you don't control them like your counselors uh, they're they're more like a sleeper agent uh, they're still controlled by whatever faction they're a part of but you can kind of determine determine whether or not they fail or pass missions and you can basically see where they go and you get a bunch of information on the faction and stuff like that. So just keep in mind you're not going to have as much control over these two as you will with the other guys. Now the other guys there's a couple things to really look at. A you want to see what their stats are but probably more important than that is you want to see what kind of missions they work. Initially you can uh, buy a third one and I suggest doing that ASAP um, before you unpause the game because the more uh, guys you have the more missions you can run the more missions you run, the more things you can do. So it's super important to grab a guy early on. Now, every guy costs either 30 or 60. The 60 guys you won't be able to afford early on. I don't really know the difference because I don't really feel like the 60 guys are necessarily that much better. They might just have a better loyalty. That might just be it, honestly. 
Yeah, that might be it. But the one thing to keep in mind is uh, they have their classes, but just because uh, a specific person has a specific class doesn't mean they're going to have the same missions as everyone else in that class. So I have an investigator here, and uh, she has all of these different missions here, and I have an investigator here, and she actually has all the same missions. But that's not always the case. Sometimes their traits affect what missions they have. In addition to that, you can actually give organizations, uh, which we'll talk about here in a second, to a counselor which will actually give them set of even more missions but what's really really important early game is you're really looking for let's go ahead and click on our guys you're looking for a couple high persuasion members that have control nations so control nations is essentially how you end up getting control points in the game uh the higher level of a control point the harder it is to actually get so for example one of these american control points because there were so much money and signs and stuff like that they're essentially impossible to grab early game so you're gonna have to start with some smaller countries maybe some of the countries in europe uh early game until you start leveling your guys up but more than that until you start spreading the gospel of your faction as you start becoming more and more popular the other thing to keep in mind is as you start uh uh controlling some countries their neighbors start becoming more and more friendly and it becomes easier to spread to their neighbors so for example germany might be really hard to grab in the early game but if i flip czech republic and denmark now all of a sudden germany is going to be a little bit easier not a lot but at least a little bit so early on you're going to want some high persuasion people that can do some control nation defend interests uh basically make it really hard for the enemy to uh, steal your points um and i'm not going to talk about all of these but the other one you're really looking and you should start with one that has it is investigate alien activity so they'll use some of your command points to basically see what the aliens are doing um so we basically start with two super high persuasion girls or people that um both can control nations which is great she also has public campaign which is amazing public campaign is going to be great for like america because we're just or you know france or germany or anything like that we're going to want to start sending people fairly early on to uh, basically get them to uh influence them and make us more popular because the more popular we are the easier it is to actually grab some of these control points so that's great the downside right now is we have crap science so because of that our science per turn is pretty bad so we probably want to look for someone that actually is going to give us some early game science so we can you know maybe not fall super far behind everyone else the other stats um investigations great for like discovering uh, different opponents some of the missions none of these actually have it but sometimes you like investigate different agents uh which allows you to get more information about a you can uh, figure out the loyalty of your own units but you know really kind of uh investigate uh opposing agents you can learn more about them and then espionage is all about like hidden missions and stuff like that you can like detain different agents you can like convert them stuff like that that's all going to be espionage command is important because each uh point of uh, command increases the counselor's ops income by one so you can see right now that we don't have any ops income because actually should we not be getting just ever so slightly we have no ops income each point of uh, command increases counselor ops income by one. So it's three. Interesting. Oh, 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 oh. But see, my monthly income zero here. Yeah, maybe it just hasn't ticked over yet. I don't know. I don't know but command is really important for a lot of missions like for example if you're attacking enemy bases and stuff like that or you're commanding teams to go do something that's where command really comes into uh, that's where it's really really important uh, administration is how many different uh, orgs you can actually attach to a person so for example i can get right now because i have an administration of six i can actually get six stars worth of uh, administration so these administrations or these organizations are really cool because they give you different benefits so for example if i grab this organization and i put it here on ruben what it would give me is it would give me plus one to my espionage stat um and then it would also give me the mission steal uh project which he does not have which would be interesting also i would get one percent more from our spoils when we control countries and i would also get one percent more on information science research so for me to actually put this on him it would require 81 bucks as well as 15 influence 
And then we have some other ones over here. This one gives us a bunch of income on science. So that's actually amazing. And then this one gives us some monthly income uh, when it comes to um, uh, 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 the projects down here, which would be uh, nice to have. So also you need an org for one of your counselors that grants an engineering project. So um, at some point you're gonna wanna find a project that does that, that actually um, uh, you can attach to your people. Wrong button. So. What else do we need to talk about here? Oh, then science, you know, affects how much science points you put here. Security is how hard it is for them to be um, uh, arrested or abducted by other people. And then loyalty is not so important early game, but you, you know, you want to make sure that your dudes aren't working for other people. And so then these are all the different incomes they can get and whether or not they give you incomes. And then there's also different traits. Keep in mind, different traits will um, certain uh, uh, organizations over here are actually restricted by traits you may or may not have uh, these organizations by the way kind of like cycle so just because it's up there now doesn't mean it will be there uh, later so she's a criminal so sometimes you'll see different criminal organizations that only people that are actually criminals would be able to research so you know it's important to kind of you know make sure you have certain traits government's another one that's kind of important as well so then what do I recommend here well since we start with high persuasion like I said I think you want two people with high persuasion that has control nation you definitely want someone probably multiple people to have public campaign in addition to that you're looking for people that have high science since I don't have a lot of science here but I do have the Phoenix laboratory um I think I'm gonna give now because I'm gonna save her and just in case a criminal one shows up so this is gonna cost us 112 I have the money um, so you can see that used quite a bit of my money but now my science is gonna go up pretty significantly now uh, once this actually ticks. It won't actually uh, apply here until we unpause the game uh, and then we get the next, um, essentially there's like phases every couple of weeks, which we'll get to here, uh, mission phases, which we'll get to here in a second. Oh, other thing we didn't talk about is your counselors do gain XP and as they gain XP, you can start leveling them up. Sometimes you get different traits, which will help them uh, get more stats. Like you can see uh, Prospice here gives them plus three income per month, uh, or you can just give them base stats here like giving them more administration or more persuasion is always super super important so anyway since i gained phoenix laboratory i don't think it's going to be as important for us to recruit a science person here so what we're really looking for is probably someone that can do crackdown but not only crackdown we also want them to be able to grab purge so purge allows us to take control of an enemy uh, uh uh essentially an enemy control point crackdown so if a control point has uh, a crackdown status then it generates no income for whoever uh has control of it now to actually purge it and get it to flip to us uh, it's a lot easier to purge one that's been cracked down. So that's why it's kind of important to have both, I feel. So like she would be, um, even though I can't grab her. Oh, no, I can grab her. Uh, having both of those is kind of nice. The downside here is I don't really have anything else she can do right now. Investigating counselor is not a horrible thing early game. But like, I would almost like for her to have, like, I love how he's a hacker and he has crackdown and he has public campaign. Cause I could just send him spreading the gospel of me early game, even though he doesn't have a lot of persuasion, but that would still be fine. Um, let's see, you're an investigator. You have crackdown and purge. You could detain and investigate, which isn't bad. Detaining is kind of nice. Um, you have crackdown control. Okay, so he can actually control then. And he has purge. Yeah, this guy looks pretty dang good. He also has detain, surveil, stabilize. Oh, he can even assault enemy. Yeah, okay, this guy has pretty much everything you wanna see fairly early game. Except there's one thing missing. The one thing that's missing is hostile takeover. This is an absolutely amazing ability. So what you wanna do at some point is you wanna find uh, a counselor, an enemy counselor, you wanna investigate them, you wanna detain them, and once they're detained, then you can send anyone that has the hostile takeover uh, to basically do a hostile takeover of them. And so when they do a hostile takeover, what they do at that point is you can choose any one of the organizations that they currently have, and you will steal that organization from them, which is freaking awesome and super, super powerful, because the AI tends to get some really, really good ones early game. So that's gonna be the only thing I think early game that we would be missing from this group here. Um, 
but this guy right here is pretty freaking good so we're gonna go ahead and recruit him that's gonna use our 30 and now we basically have nothing to do so we're gonna unpause the game and it's gonna immediately pop us over to the assignment phase so the assignment phase is essentially how you tell your uh, people what to do and how to do things you can only do this at the beginning of the game once every week and then eventually it turns to once every other week and so at this point I can give them a mission you can see I can go with control nation I can do stabilize nation I can surveil location I can go to ground or I can investigate alien activity now the thing is you'll notice immediately when I click on one of these you'll see the success rate up here and you can actually see what uh, stats they use and we can even increase the stats but we'll get over that to a, uh we'll get we'll go over that here in a second so i think to begin with i'm gonna go with our inspector here and i'm gonna have him do the investigate the alien activity i think grabbing that early on is pretty important because it's kind of the main mission it's a hundred percent so really anyone can do that but since he has low persuasion i think i think having him do it is really really probably the best option i could send someone else to do it but literally there's no reason so what we want to do at this point is we want to go ahead and start controlling some nations one thing you'll notice is the percentage as soon as you click on it you'll notice that the percentage pops up of all these different nations um it changes every game based on your popularity as you start with so you'll notice that we're pretty uh, popular over here with the Baltic states um, uh, and the Eurasian Union and with uh, uh, Portugal but not as much with like France which is kind of sucks the other thing is you'll notice it's a 65% chance so at the end of the phase we'll let the time tick and what will happen is a number will be rolled between 1 and 100 and if we roll less than this number which is weird i know it's less than the number not higher but anyways if it's rolled less than the number we succeed in it the other thing we can do is we can take our influence up here and we can actually bump it up and the more influence you'll notice it goes from one influence to influence four so it like doubles but anyways the more influence we put into it the more likely we are to succeed in it now our influence is kind of bad early on so because of that i'm gonna go with like a 74 percent chance and we're just gonna go ahead and go for the belarus over there and then with ming i'm gonna go ahead and go for control as well and i generally i mean honestly we have a lot of popularity over here in ooh asia which is interesting these guys don't actually have any other claims i generally like recently playing as the resistance to come over here and grab as much of europe as possible at least with the um european union because my whole goal early game is to actually form the european union as quickly as possible so i can start making larger countries uh to keep our uh, command cap uh not as uh nasty oh the other thing to keep in mind is remember i mentioned that if you control the first one uh if there's two points then no one can grab the second one so the other thing to kind of look for early game are these points that uh have only two because you can basically lock them down and keep everyone else from grabbing them so and then you're also kind of looking for science you know and the different stats you know who has like really good uh science so uh up here in finland they're actually at like 24 uh and then yeah their gdp is not bad so yeah i kind of like the idea of going up here with finland it's only at 70 percent i'm gonna bump one in just because i feel a little bit better with 77. so once everyone has their missions i can hit confirm assignments and we can go ahead and just speed up the game so we're currently going speed five and essentially there's not really anything for us to do at this point um and um i'm just going to kind of skip all this stuff here because we'll end up doing it on the next uh, uh on our actual playthrough but i just kind of want to get to the actual missions here so first up we ended up completing the investigation into the alien crash so this is going to give us a new project soon in addition to that we actually uh got another 20 influence so that means we can get another counselor and then we also got another 20 science so that's going to allow us a little more science uh output here as well so oh the other thing to keep in mind uh our counselor was spotted which kind of sucks but okay um the other thing to keep in mind uh Oh crap, I got distracted. So since they got spotted, basically it means this faction has seen them. It doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna be detained and eventually they might lose track of them, but you can always go to ground with them to kind of start shaking off uh, some of the um, tracking. What were, 
I was about to say something and completely forgot it. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, really quickly, new project available. So we can go ahead and switch this project then to the alien signatures. Uh, and you'll notice this one's gonna finish significantly quicker. But now that I have an organization here, this guy's now generating me a lot more signs. So he's generating me 18 signs. So our monthly income now is up to five point or 56. Um, taking over. per month which is nice so okay. all right so we got our first control mission success here in finland so we can actually pop over here and we also got the belarus one so both of these succeeded and so because of that now i can come here to the priorities and i can start adjusting these i can take one of the pre uh built ones or i can just leave it on resist and you can see uh the kind of percentage that they're putting towards each one of these things which is nice but more than that we can hover over and we can see we're making a little bit of money we're making a little bit more science and we're getting a little bit of boost here as well which is interesting i didn't know that you yeah i didn't know you actually had the space flight program in finland that's good to know you wait no you don't so then why are you giving me boost you're not giving yeah why are you giving me boost huh interesting yeah, I don't know why they're giving me boost. They shouldn't, because they don't have the space program. Yeah, because space flight programs right there are not boost. Anyways, so you can see we control uh, these two countries now. Now, there's still not really anything for us to do until we get to the next mission phase, so we're just going to kind of go forward. We did discover that there's an enemy consular over here. Um, they're probably going to be doing something similar to what we're doing, so we could go track them. You know, one thing I could Ready do is I go. could say, hey, go investigate them. 89% chance. I could put some ops here. And it might not be a bad idea, because honestly, capturing him early on might not be the worst um the other thing uh and you know i mentioned this earlier is we probably want to come here and recruit and go ahead and get ourselves a fourth member in this case i don't know if anyone else has hostile takeover and so because of that i might want to wait a little bit until i can actually get the tycoon because having hostile takeover i feel is just really important you can get it from um different organizations but yeah, and he has purge and he has control nations. His persuasion's kind of bad, but he has really good administration, so that means he can take more um, organizations. So I think he's actually totally worth it, uh, but we'll have to wait a little while till we can actually get up there. So we'll just run with the three for now. And so anyways, you know, I could go ahead and I could go control nation. Now, since his persuasion's only four, you'll notice that, for example, France is like a 4% chance. If I threw all my influence into it, it only give me an 18% chance. If Where I go to? with Ming, who has a, a persuasion, and I go down here, and I pump everything in, now I have a 52% chance. So, you know, generally you want to save your influence because early game as much as possible because you want to get as many um, counselors because the more counselors you have, the more stats you get, the more stats you get, the more missions you can do, all that fun stuff. So you really want to get the counselors out as quickly as possible. But, but it might be necessary to grab a nation or two here or there or pump a point into a different nation here or two. Now, things I think are super necessary, start controlling, start controlling. And then whoever is like your third guy, I wouldn't necessarily worry about crackdown. Um, and I might not even try controlling nation. Honestly, what I might end up doing, oh, he can't actually do it. Um, but if he could improve relations, I might actually use him for that on like France, for example, early game, just to start bumping that up to make it a little bit easier on myself. Um, I wouldn't use it on her because she's my best at actually flipping support. So, you know, maybe if we ever get to the point where we're starting to hit the cap and we need France, but honestly, Honestly, yeah, I'll probably just keep her doing what she's doing. And you'll notice, like, look at the percentages over here now. Significantly higher. Why? Because we got both of these guys. So now we're a lot more popular. So honestly, coming down here and grabbing uh, the Netherlands, not a bad idea. Because guess what? Well, sorry, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a variety of countries because it's not just the Netherlands. But anyways, uh, that would help me here with France. Oh, this is actually public support. That's the problem. That's why it was so much higher. Yeah, okay, there you go. It's still a little bit higher, but not that much higher. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyways. So I think that's kind of a basic understanding of the game. I think that kind of gets you uh, uh, going here. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Sorry it was a little long-winded, but yeah, we'll be back later today with actual first episode. So till then, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys later. Bye, everyone.